Brothers and sisters, aloha. aloha. My name is Keilani Kajiyama Chinkum, the proud daughter of Jennifer Mie Kajiyama Chinkum. I am honored to share some fun things only I know about my mom. <laughs> Starting now, this is Seminar 101 of the Biography of Mom. Fun fact Did you know my mom went to Laia Elementary School? Her third grade classroom was the same third grade classroom I was in. Isn't that cool? <laughs> <laughs> then, after Laia Elementary School, she went to Kahuku High and Intermediate, where I will go in several years. She won't tell you this, but she graduated as a valedictorian. We both love Kahuku High School football and are both Red Raiders for life. In other words, RRFL. Then, after high school, she went to BYU Hawaii. I want to go there too. She studied political science, where she now is a professor in that subject. Did you know that she graduated as a valedictorian here too? She really is smart. <laughs> My mom also worked at the US Senate, the Hawaii Attorney General's Office, the Hawaii State Supreme Court, and the Hawaii State House of Representatives. After college, she went on a mission to the Japan Nagoya Mission, and then attended BYU Law School and completed a joint law and master's of public administration's degree. My mom really, really is more. <laughs> Soon after that, my mom took the bar and became a fully licensed attorney. Fun fact. Did you know my mom is licensed to practice law before the Supreme Court? Only a few people have that opportunity. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> and another fun fact, even though my mom is only five feet, she is slightly taller than Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the second woman to serve on the Supreme Court. She was able to meet Justice Ginsburg when she was sworn in. And a few more fun facts about my mom. My mom is an identical twin, and she is seven minutes older than my Auntie Nicole. Although my auntie acts like she's older. <laughs> <laughs> and my auntie also graduated as a valedictorian from BYU Hawaii and went to BYU Law School too. They really are identical twins. Me and my mom love to laugh and joke a lot. I love to tell jokes. I hope you can see that in my introduction. <laughs> we love to bake, especially love to sing and dance. I even taught her how to floss. <laughs> well, she sort of knows how to floss. I love my mom, and I want to be just like her. I know that my mom loves me with all of her heart and that she would do anything for me. Some of the reasons I love her are that she is kind and compassionate and she loves to help people. If you ask anyone, they will say she's always happy. There is not a day you will see her frowning. Not one day. She teaches me important gospel principles, like how important it is to obey God's commandments and how we should follow Jesus Christ. Mom really loves Heavenly Father and the temple. She tells me that the temple truly is the happiest place on earth. Way better than Disneyland, unlike they say, and I think so too. Mom wants our family to be together forever. I had the opportunity to attend the temple and be sealed to my mom and dad. It was such a beautiful experience. I remember how happy we all were and how we smiled from ear to ear. I felt so happy I could burst. I kept thinking how much I love my family and I want to be with them forever. Because I went to the temple, I know families can be together forever, just like the song. Mom loves to help people, especially her students. She does everything she can to help them succeed. She also is very beautiful. And my mom, although small in stature, is like a giant to me. I love her, and I know that through following Jesus, miracles can happen. Brothers and sisters, Mom!
Thank you, Ke'ilani, for your sweet introduction. I love you very much, and I am so blessed to be your mother. I hope you can tell that she has a very special light. I am also very grateful for the opportunity to speak with you today. It brings back memories of being a student at BYU Hawaii, sitting in the audience and attending devotionals just like you. I have felt strongly about the message I will be sharing today and pray for the Spirit to communicate the intents and feelings of my heart to yours. I sincerely hope to share something meaningful with you in this period of opportunity, preparation, and change. There is a Japanese proverb which states, Chirimo tsumoreba yama to naru. When translated, it means, even specks of dust, when piled, can become a mountain. Or as the Lord has said, by small and simple things are great things brought to pass. This proverb and scripture have very personal application. I am small and simple. There is, actually, <laughs> maybe in this audience too, there is nothing or no one smaller than me. In fact, I need these very tall shoes so that I can talk to you and be seen over the pulpit. Can you see? Can <laughs> you see me? <laughs> and although I am small and simple in the eyes of the world, I am of great consequence to our Heavenly Father, and He loves me and has a plan for me. He loves each of you and has a plan for you too. The world may look down upon us as we are seen as the dust of the earth, insignificant and inconsequential, but to God, who sees us as we really are, we are precious, invaluable, and of greatest worth simply because we are his children. There have been times in my life, due to circumstance, health conditions, and the choices of others, that I have felt of little worth. I have been divorced, a single mother, survived brain surgery, and lived in periods of darkness. However, I discovered that if you have faith and trust in God, he will open doors, angels will appear, bridges will emerge, and miracle workers will perform their magic. Just as the prophet Joseph Smith taught, while one portion of the human race is judging and condemning the other without mercy, the great parent of the universe looks upon the whole of the human family with a fatherly care and paternal regard, for his love is unfathomable. Once I saw myself in this light, I began to see that God's hand was in every portion of my life. He was always there for me. I just didn't notice. Darkness destroyed my ability to see clearly and allowed negative thoughts about myself to shackle me. But by doing the small and simple things, keeping the faith, praying, attending church, etc., light filled my life. Angels, many of whom are here in the audience and who are my students and people may be listening, <laughs> they all provided encouragement, insight, and small gestures which added to this light. And when I went to the temple, this light was amplified, and the doubts, darkness, and distance from God disappeared. It was in the temple where I felt comforted, peace, and Heavenly Father's distinct love for me. The temple confirmed my new ways of thinking. The veil of darkness was lifted from my mind, and I began to see myself as God saw me. It was the small and simple things that brought me out of darkness and into God's brilliant light. Today, I want to speak about the small and simple things we can do to lift the dark veil of unbelief from our minds and fill our lives with the light of the glory of God, which marvelous light infuses our soul with joy and dispels the clouds of darkness. As I look back on my life, I see how small and simple choices have brought forth great blessings. At the time, these decisions may have seemed inconsequential, even as tiny as a speck of dust. I can now see with retrospective reverence 
the mountains of blessings that they have become. First, seek to perform small and simple acts of kindness. Second, find gratitude in the small and simple things in life. Third, see your small and simple character traits through God's eyes. And fourth, perform your small and simple acts with faith in Jesus Christ. First, seek to perform small and simple acts of kindness. The Lord has said, Wherefore, be not weary in well-doing, for ye are laying the foundation of a great work, and out of small things proceedeth that which is great. The Lord is teaching us that well-doing is built upon the small, faith-filled actions we take every day. These actions taken in totality can have eternal consequences. My father, Katsuhiro Kajiyama, is a humble and talented artist, professor, and an amazing father and grandfather. He is the epitome of Christ-like light, love, and faith. However, my father's life was not always filled with such light and hope. He is a survivor of the atomic bombing of Hiroshima, Japan. In this tragic event, his mother and brother and many family members were killed. This is the last picture of my father that he has with his family that were taken eight months before the bombing. On the morning of August 6th, 1945, my father heard a loud air raid siren piercing the air. He ran and he crouched by the school door, and suddenly an intense light appeared as if a thousand flash photos had been taken. There was a thunderous blast and a force so strong that the entire building shook. The world was filled with pandemonium and hysteria. Buildings were in flames. Thick smoke engulfed virtually everything, and frenzied crying and screaming filled the air. During this fearful state, my father longed for his mother's comfort and gentle touch. By some miracle, his mother was able to locate my father through the rubble and chaos. In the midst of this devastation, and even though severely injured and burned, my grandmother searched tirelessly for her son. It was my father's, or sorry, it was my grandmother's final act of love to find her son and bring him home. And 20 pain-filled days later, my grandmother died. My father was tormented by these images of pain and death of the bombing and of losing his mother and brother. He longed to hear the sweet, gentle call of his mother, and it seemed that he would never find peace in this cruel and harsh existence. But... God did not forget him. And one day on a streetcar, when my father was headed to school, he saw two gaijin, foreign American missionaries. My father didn't usually see foreigners, but if he did, he avoided them because they reminded him of the war and filled him with deep pain and sadness. However, on this day, a missionary, Elder Gary Roper, did something so small and simple that it changed my father's life forever. He smiled at my father. Yes, a smile. <laughs> and this act caught my father's attention. It caused him to drop his veil of darkness and allowed the light of Christ to reach him. This simple act invited God's light in, and my father agreed to hear the missionaries, attended church, was baptized, he served a mission in Japan. He attended BYU Hawaii and BYU Provo. He met my mother, Hilda Kajiyama, and was sealed in the Salt Lake Temple. He then raised a beautiful family. <laughs> President David O. McKay, quoting Sir Humphrey Davy, stated that, life is made up not of great sacrifices or duties, but of little things in which smiles and kindness and small obligations given habitually are what win and preserve the heart and secure comfort. 
a simple act changed my father's life. Elder Roper might have been tired, rejected, homesick, and uncomfortable living in a foreign land, attempting to speak an unfamiliar tongue. He might have felt alone, insecure, inadequate. He might have felt like many of you, studying in a distant country and learning in a non-native language. How often do we disregard doing the small, simple kind acts and allow the negative fears to prevent us from sharing God's light? I believe that our Heavenly Father has small daily tasks that he would like us to do at BYU Hawaii to bring great things to pass. President Spencer W. Kimball said, God does notice us and he watches over us, but it is usually through another person that he meets our needs. Therefore, it is vital that we serve each other in the kingdom. So often, our acts of service consist of simple encouragement or of giving mundane help with mundane tasks. But what glorious consequences can flow from mundane acts and from small but deliberate deeds? A kind word, a compliment, a smile can change someone's life forever. These acts may seem ordinary to the giver, but extraordinary to the receiver. Heavenly Father wants us to be his instruments, helping to fulfill his work on earth and at BYU Hawaii. Small and simple acts of kindness can help change someone's life, even your own life forever. Second, <laughs> find gratitude for the small and simple things in life. For about five years, I suffered from a condition called hemifacial muscle spasms, which resulted in severe migraines, pains to the right side of my face, and muscle distortion and spasms. At first, these spasms started as a flutter to my right eye, but soon progressively moved down my face to my cheek, my mouth, my neck, and eventually my shoulders. Movement of my face or my mouth and stressful or high energy situations like this <laughs> would trigger my spasms, which would not let up for several hours. Sometimes the spasms would continue through the night while, sleep, while I was sleeping. Just imagine having your eyelids rapidly open and close all day and night. My face was constantly tired and painful. Simple things like smiling, looking people in the eye, being in front of others, teaching, reading, singing were all challenges for me. And as a teacher with an outgoing personality, I had to stand up every day for hours with my face, my mouth, and my shoulders spasming. Every day, I would wake up and I would pray to have courage to teach and to look people in the eye. And when my spasms would get really bad, I would use my right hand to cover the right portion of my face as I felt very self-conscious. One day, I saw my daughter, Keilani, who you all heard from, and at the time, she was three years old. She was staring at herself in the mirror, and she was making a funny expression, closing her eyelid and drawing her mouth up and down. I tentatively asked what she was doing, and I will never forget her response. Mom, I'm just trying to be beautiful like you. Through the voice of this small and tiny child, I saw myself in a completely different light. I wasn't someone who was hideous or ugly, but a person that my daughter admired and wanted to be like. From the voice and perspective of a child who the world might view as small and insignificant, I was taught to change my perspective and to see true beauty through her eyes. However, my condition continued to worsen, and I tried to find many ways to make the spasms stop, but nothing helped. 
finally, my doctor recommended that I get microvascular decompression brain surgery. <laughs> I learned of one surgeon in Hawaii who performed this surgery. However, I was unable to schedule an appointment with him because of his very busy schedule as a surgeon. I had run out of options, and I didn't know what to do. Physically, there was nothing I could do to stop the spasms, and knowing that the spasms, pain, and headaches would only worsen with time made me feel hopeless and powerless. I couldn't even schedule an appointment with the surgeon. It seemed that I had reached the end of my known path, and I worried that God might not have a plan for me, and that this condition would eventually take away my ability to see, talk, and interact with others. Yet, I continued to persevere in performing small and simple acts of faith, attending church in the temple, and seeking God's light. And in the solace of the temple, I received much needed comfort and perspective that God loved me, was aware of me, and that these physical trials were not a punishment from God, but part of God's plan for me. I saw that God had not forsaken or forgotten me. This experience was part of his divine design, and I needed to patiently endure. Then, the miracle happened. I was asked to give a talk in church, and I don't know if that's normally a miracle, but it was in my case. <laughs> the night before, I had to give the talk. Um, I had the worst hemifacial muscle spasm attack. I was up till about 3 in the morning, and my face and cheek, my mouth, and my shoulders were spasming, and there was no relief for my suffering. So when I spoke in church the next day, I shared briefly about my experience the previous night. And I talked about how grateful I was that I could attend church and that I would have the opportunity to speak. A friend in the congregation heard my challenges. And here's the miracle. This friend also suffered from hemifacial muscle spasms and had received the same brain surgery that I had sought from the very doctor that I had been trying to contact for months. She understood my pains, worries, and fears. And she told me how much her life had improved from the surgery and encouraged me to undergo the procedure. She called the doctor's office, who contacted me to make an appointment. And after meeting the surgeon, he immediately scheduled me for surgery, and I was able to have this life-changing operation. Hemifacial muscle spasms are so uncommon that there are less than 1 in 10,000 people in the United States suffering from this condition. What were the chances of someone with the exact same medical condition treated by the exact same doctor with the exact same surgery, and she also lived in my small town and attended my ward too. God did not forget me. He loved me, and he had a beautiful plan for me. Thankfully, this plan included being healed from my debilitating physical condition, and, um, and you see me now, I can smile, right? I will never take for granted this beautiful ability that I have to smile and to look people in the eye. I carry with me the um, glove that was cut up and used to tie back my hair when they shaved my, my head for my surgery site. And I have a little divot in my forehead where they screwed the vise in so that they could keep my head still during the surgery. Those are the only physical reminders that I have of that uh, condition before my surgery. Today, I am incredibly blessed to have my life back, spasm-free and full of joy. 
I am grateful for the ability to see unimpaired or restrained. I am grateful for prayer and priesthood blessings. I am grateful for a loving Savior who knows my pains and carries me through my struggles. I am grateful for the power of perspective and to see my life with new eyes. Elder Joseph B. Worland said, sometimes we should express our gratitude for the small and simple things like <clears throat> the scent of the rain, the taste of your favorite food, or the sound of a loved one's voice. Thinking of the things we are grateful for is a healing balm. It changes our focus from our pains and our trials to the abundance of the beautiful world we live in. Truly, finding gratitude for the small and simple things in life brings about great blessings. Third, see your small and simple character traits through God's eyes. The world may see me, literally, <laughs> as physically small and insignificant. First is my diminutive height. I am only five feet tall, as you heard from my daughter. <laughs> Additionally, I have a high-pitched, childlike, and some have said, Disney princess voice. <laughs> a law professor, a former judge, had this specific view of me. He critiqued my performance after giving an opening statement in class. And he told me that I had two big obstacles pitted against me. I was short, and my voice was just too high pitched. These characteristics, he said, made me appear young, inexperienced, and with these flaws, I would not make a good attorney. I just appeared to be too nice, and on top of these fatal flaws, I smiled the entire time. <laughs> my height, my voice, and my smile, he said, would always prevent me from being an effective advocate. Now, hearing I wouldn't make a good attorney from a former judge while I was in law school was crushing. I remember asking to be excused and running to the bathroom. And there, in the confines of the stall, I sobbed. These weaknesses seemed overpowering as I realized there wasn't much I could do to change these characteristics or my circumstance. I couldn't magically grow taller or change the pitch of my voice, right? <laughs> but in that moment, the still small voice spoke to my heart these words, Jennifer, change your perspective. In my mind's eye, I saw that these three obstacles were really stepping stones toward helping me become an effective lawyer and the person God wanted me to be. Given my height, I would never likely be a basketball player <laughs> or tower over my opponents in the courtroom. Yet, I would never be an intimidating or threatening figure. My voice, although high-pitched, could be a source of cheery joy and optimism. It could invigorate, bring hope, speak tenderness and comfort. And I could also work, possibly, at Disneyland. <laughs> My smile could be disarming and communicate warmth and relatability. I learned several important lessons from this experience. First, my perceived weaknesses, by the world's standards, could become my greatest strengths. These were characteristics that God specifically gave me. I could not change them. I had to embrace them and discover how to make them work for me. I want you to consider what others might see as your weakness or flaw and then seek to shift your perspective. Instead of being a negative characteristics, characteristic, focus on how it becomes a blessing. This is what makes you, you, you unique and sets you apart. No one else is quite like you and your quirks can become the quintessential quality that makes you stand out. Second, don't let anyone diminish you and your spiritual gifts. You are the master of your destiny, and you determine who you become. And finally, lawyers, leaders, and individuals come in all shapes and sizes. You may not have a commanding presence, be the loudest, the tallest, etc., but you can still be a great influence for good and a leader with your God-given talents. Your challenges can become your greatest catalysts for change. 
choose to see your small and simple character traits through God's eyes. Finally, perform your small and simple acts with faith in Jesus Christ. Elder Ronald A. Rasven spoke about maintaining our faith during moments of fear in his October 2018 General Conference Address. He mentioned, he mentioned several fears that we mortals face. We experience fear of failure, rejection, disappointment, fear of the unknown, fear of not being chosen, fear of being chosen, fear of not being good enough, and fear that the Lord has no blessings for us. We can fear change and that these fears can escalate into terror. There are moments in my life where I felt debilitating fear that clouded my judgment and blocked my ability to feel God's never-ending love. As Elder Neil L. Anderson stated, fear and faith cannot coexist in our hearts at the same time. As I reflect on my life, I realize that had I succumbed to my fears and failed to perform those small and simple things, it would have prevented many of the great blessings in my life one of which was meeting my eternal companion, Nick, <laughs> and being sealed to him and our daughter, Kei Lani, on June 29th, 2018. Nick is incredible. He is so Christ-like. He is tender and caring. He is responsible and hardworking, and he loves Kei Lani and my family, and most importantly, he loves the Lord. I was single for a long time, and I wondered if I would really ever get married. I am so eternally grateful that both Nick and I had faith and performed the small and simple things necessary so that we could meet each other and we could be sealed in the temple. Miracles really do happen. <laughs> As for the missionary who changed my father's life, if he gave into his fears of feeling inadequate, discouraged, and rejected, he may not have smiled and invited my father to church and to listen to the missionary discussions. If my father didn't put aside his fears, he would have been prevented from learning about God, the plan of salvation, and eternal families. My father wouldn't have served a mission, studied in America, and became a professor here at BYU Hawaii. And he wouldn't have become my dad. As my father always says, the greatest blessings in his life came from joining the church and serving a mission. You might be experiencing fear yourself. You may feel inadequate, discouraged, and alone. You may even be suffering in silence. But don't give up. Believe that God hears and answers your secret prayers. Continue on the covenant path, doing those small and simple things you know you should be doing. As President Russell L. Nelson promised, great blessings will come. And as for me, once I made temple attendance a regular and scheduled practice, my life began to transform. My fears were set aside, answers to prayers were received, and miracles poured into my life. One of my miracles was completing a marathon. However, <laughs> running for 26.2 miles seemed like an insurmountable goal, and I had many legitimate fears and concerns. Recovery from my brain surgery was very difficult. I could not hear well. I had a hard time swallowing and speaking, uh, standing up in front of people, that all was very challenging. Sitting up for more than a few minutes caused me to feel weak and lightheaded, and I couldn't exert much physical energy without feeling pain and throbbing in my head. If I couldn't even sit, stand, and walk a few steps without sitting down, how would I ever complete such a grueling task? With small and simple goals of walking for five minutes, and then 10 minutes, and then 30 minutes, before finally running for sustained periods of time, I began to change. As it says in Ether 12, 27, I give unto men weakness that they may be humble, and all men who humble themselves before me and have faith in me, then will I make weak things become strong unto them. 
I scheduled a time to run each day with good friends that helped motivate me and keep me going. In rain or shine, in early morning or night, I kept running. Part of my training included running a half marathon with my mom and Kate Ilani and a very good friend, a dear friend who was an experienced runner. My friend was a great source of strength as she prepared us for the race, encouraged us to pace ourselves and remain hydrated, and most importantly, to never give up. We rely deeply on her experience, encouragement, and perspective. I was also blessed by the indomitable determination of eight-year-old Kate Ilani. We ran the first nine miles without much trouble, but then things became very difficult at mile 10. Kate Ilani was in a lot of pain. Her shoes were just too small, and she ultimately wore a hole in her sneakers. But she never gave up. And each time she wanted to stop, we took turns encouraging each other and singing, joking, and telling riddles. And even when the race was the most difficult and we had to stop to stretch, Kate Ilani looked us all in the eye and said, I am not giving up. <laughs> I am finishing this race. When we finally reached the finish line, with big smiles from ear to ear, as well as tears in our eyes, Kate Ilani said, Mom, we did it. We finished as a family. We went through the highs and the lows of the race together. We encouraged, supported, and sustained each other, and we finished as a team. It is my deep desire that my family, myself, and each of you will never give up on your faith, testimony, and love for the gospel and each other. I hope that at the end of our earthly race, we will all be together, hugging, crying, and rejoicing that we did it. We finished as a family. I hope we can rejoice as the Apostle Paul says in Timothy 4.7. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Let us work consistently and steadfastly in performing the small, ordinary acts of faith to work miracles in your life. I encourage each of us to remove the clouds of darkness and the veil of unbelief that binds us to our fearful and lowly stations. Let the light of the Lord into our hearts and help us see things as they really are. I hope that you will take courage in the words of the Savior when he was asked by his disciples about why the blind man was born blind. Was it the fault of the blind man or his parents? As the Savior said, neither has this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. We all experience trials so that God can work his miracles within us. It is this purification and sanctification process that allows us to become like our Savior. And when the darkness of my past was lifted, I could see hundreds of miracles. Why? Because God loves me, and God loves you too. I know it is because of my difficult experiences that I can recognize this beautiful light and goodness surrounding me. I can also see that I am worthy of God's greatest blessings. We are all worthy when we strive to become more Christ-like and follow our Savior. We are worthy because we have not given up on our God, our testimony, or our faith in Jesus Christ. We are worthy because we recognize and heed his promptings. And... We are worthy simply because we are his children. As I have prayed and asked God what he thinks of me, I have felt complete peace and stillness. I have felt great joy and incomprehensible acceptance. I know that I am a child of God, and I know God accepts of my efforts to follow him. I encourage each of us to perform those small and simple acts of faith. I know that he will remove the dark veil of unbelief from our eyes and provide the brilliant light necessary to see ourselves as he does and infuse our lives with joy. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.